What is the difference if you go in to an NFL camp as a first round guy versus going in as a guy like you, 10th rounder, undrafted free agent? How does it change your mentality? Because oh, you, know, you know you will have to struggle and fight to make the team. You also have to understand you're not going to get the same opportunities to mess up or the same opportunities to grow and learn that first rounders will get. You're going to have to make an immediate impact somewhere, whether it be special teams, whether somebody realizes you're a very intelligent you're hungrier, football basically. player. You've got to be I don't, hungrier. I don't know if you're hungrier. You just under, you're desperate. You yeah. understand where you are. I went, I went in with the, the whole mindset of if I don't make it, it's because I'm not, I'm not good enough. And I thought, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. I mean, there's a lot of guys that aren't good enough to play in the NFL. That's, there's no shame in that. So I went in saying, if I don't make it, it's because I'm not good enough. But it won't be from a lack of effort, and I won't talk myself out of not making this team. I have seen guys sit in the locker room after a bad day of practice and talk to themselves that there's it's no way I can make it. They start number counting. Yeah, they yep. start number counting. There's no way they can make it. And you're right about the special teams. Terrell Davis, who was phenomenal, six-round pick for us in Denver, you know where he got his start, how he made our team? Special teams in the fourth quarter of a game in Japan against the San Francisco 49ers. Oh. We called him the Rook. He ran down on kickoff and blew somebody up. And we went crazy on the sideline. Then the coach said, well, let's put him in the game. Mm -hmm. Came in the game in the fourth quarter. Man, he started ripping off eight-yard runs. Bam, bam, bam. And he went from third or fourth string guy to starting tailback. And we cut Rod Bertstein, mm -hmm. a veteran running back. We cut him right before the first week because... TD was going to make it as a rookie, and that's how he got his opportunity. He ran down and blew somebody up on special teams. The rest is history. What are you trying to do, Mark, on the third day of the draft as opposed to the, the first? There's, there's so much information going on for the first three rounds, rounds four through seven. How do you approach that? It's funny because it's exactly what Mark just talked about, and it's really what Ryan did. You, know, you looked at a, a team, you sat there and said, how can he contribute? You're hoping there's traits there from the player that say he's got a chance to eventually become a starter. But the reality is, what can he do on special teams is the way I looked at it from our perspective is, what can the guy do on fourth down? Can he punt, punt block? Can he punt protect? Can he play on PAT field goal? You know, those kind of things were important elements to me when you're looking because you still wanted the traits of the player to say he's got a chance to develop into a guard or into a safety or, or as a, even as a quarterback. You, you, does he have the traits? But the most important thing I looked at was how can he help this football team on special teams so he can make the football team to grow into the position that he needs to play at? I, th I think the great ones and the great managers and the great GMs and the great personnel guys don't so much look at the weaknesses. There's a lot of teams that look yeah. at, oh, this guy can't do this and he's not fast enough and he doesn't jump over boxes well enough and all these ridiculous things that don't really translate to football they find the good stuff they find the things where you can have a niche and where you hey on on you know on nickel situations this guy could be a great blocking fullback yeah. or you know a, a short yardage goal line blocking fullback in nickel situations he could be a great guy on third down out of the backfield catches the ball yeah. whatever it is and they find that guy that can can add a little piece to your football team. We used to talk about that all the time. Don't tell me what he can't do. That's the one thing on the scouts. When I would talk to my scouts in our war room, don't tell me what he can't do. Tell me what he can do. Yeah. Everybody can tell me and pick a player apart. That's easy. You know, because you can always find, heck, we're beating up Clowney, and he might be the number one pick overall. Right. It probably is. But tell me what that, that down-the-line guy can do for our football team. What's his traits, and how does he work in with our defensive backs coach or a linebackers coach or someone. Is it harder in today's NFL with so comprehensive the vetting process for these these draft picks? Is it harder to find a diamond in the rough? Are there fewer surprises out there in round six and seven? I don't know if there's fewer surprises. One thing that I've noticed a trend lately has been when you move a guy out of a position to another position. You know, take a safety who stayed, you know, instead of making him the corner, you know, you, let's move him to safety and see what he is. Or, you know, we did it in Tampa. We drafted a guy, Eric Lorig, out of Stanford as a defensive end. Mm -hmm. We moved him to fullback, and he just signed a four-year extension with the Saints. So you, those position switches are usually the where you see the unique ones that can change.